Today I look at the differences between quality of prints coming from the Fujifilm Instax Y300 camera and the smartphone Fujifilm Instax Link Wide Printer. Both of these devices make the same size prints, the Instax Wide Print, which is double the width of an Instax Mini Print. Just a quick clarification, today I'll talk about the difference in print quality between the camera and the Instax printer. I'm not gonna talk about which one you should use, it really comes down to personal preference. Some people really like the immediacy and the analog nature of the Instax cameras, and some other people really like to print from a smartphone and get exactly the prints they want. So for this video, I took four different pictures with the Instax Y300 camera. I also took pictures from the same location using my iPhone 13 Pro using the standard white camera. And then I printed those shots from the iPhone with the Instax Link White printer. I took a landscape shot, then a full length portrait inside, picture of a map to test the sharpness, and a close up indoor portrait. For the landscape shot with the Instax Y300, I took the picture with the auto, and then I thought it was a little bit too bright, so then I also used the darkened mode. I think the darkened picture looks a little bit better, so I used that one for comparison to the print from the iPhone. So here they have side by side, here's the print from the iPhone, and here's the print from the camera. So overall, there is a very clear difference between the two pictures. The picture from the Y300 is uh, much darker and has a lot less dynamic range. So the contrast is much higher overall. That looks good in some situations, in some other situations, you might lose a lot of detail. So you can see in the forested area in the mountains, it's pretty dark and there's not a whole lot of detail in there. Also on the left side, there is a corner of a building and you can't see it at all in the Y300 print. In the print from the Link printer, the overall picture has a lot less contrast but it has a lot more detail overall. It has a kind of washed out look, but you can see a lot more detail, a lot more information. So I think if you really wanted the punchy look from the camera, you could recreate it with the printer. You just have to crank out the contrast uh, on the iPhone. As far as sharpness of detail, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference. I think they're about the same sharpness. Really, it's not a big difference. I mean, maybe one of them is sharper than the other, but I can't really tell the difference. So that's not something I would really worry about with the, in the landscape setting. In an indoor setting, it might be more of a difference. But in the landscape, when the aperture is a little bit smaller, they're both very sharp and they both look really good. So it really comes down to the preference of a look. Uh, with the Instax Y300, if it's sunny outside, you're always gonna get a really contrasty, punchy picture with not a whole lot of dynamic range. The dark areas might be almost black and also the clouds might be a little bit overblown. With the iPhone and the Link printer, you'll get a lot more dynamic range, but overall the picture might look a little bit uh, washed out. So if you don't like this look, you, you can always crank out the uh, saturation and contrast in iPhone and try a couple different uh, printing options. All the prints in this video from the Link White Printer were printed in the rich mode. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like so YouTube recommends it to as many people as possible. So next up, we have the full length portrait indoors. Here's the print from the Link Printer and this is the print from the Instax Y300. There's a huge difference between these two pictures. Uh, it mostly comes down to how the picture was taken. So if you're indoors, the Instax camera needs a lot of light. And uh, if it's a little bit darker, it's always going to use the flash. And uh, the flash will be the dominant light source. Since the modern iPhone is so sensitive, it doesn't need flash at all. It will just take the picture with using the ambient light. So that results in a very different picture. On the Instax Y300, you will have proper illuminated subject. But behind them, the background might be really dark. And as you can see in these pictures, like the couch and the area behind it is very dark. So it definitely has kind of a, its own look. It does look like a Polaroid from the 80s or 90s. This is like when I was growing up, that's how pictures looked like. Uh, it's not great, but that's how they looked like. So if you're looking for the nostalgia of the 80s and 90s, this is definitely a way to go. The print from the Link White printer looks like an iPhone picture. The iPhone has amazing dynamic range. It can uh, kind of smoothen out uh, the differences in uh, uh, lighting between the foreground and the background. It uses a lot of computation to really get the best overall picture. So the picture from the Link printer definitely has a lot more information. You can see what's going on. It definitely captures the reality better. Also, what I noticed that a lot of the prints from the Link White printer have a little bit of a tint, like a magenta tint. Uh, I bet I could take care of it in the phone maybe if I use some type of a filter. But uh, if I use it in auto mode, just take a picture and print it, a lot of the, my pictures have kind of magenta warm tint. It could be the lighting in my living room. I have LED lights from Ikea. They're kind of on the warm end of the lights because that's what we like for general purpose uh, lighting. But on the pictures, it looks a little bit warm. That's something to note. So if you don't like the magenta tint, maybe you need to use some uh, manual app on your iPhone to try to uh, manually correct for the white balance. For the next picture, I took a picture of a map from about 10 feet away. This is a recycled picture from an other video where I tested the focusing zones on the Instax Y300. So here's the print from the Y300 
and here is the print from the link printer. So again, there are clear differences between the two pictures. It comes down to the use of flash versus not use of flash because the flash was flashing and the map is kind of glossy. You can see reflection of the flash in the glossy map. So again, uh, there is the difference in uh, color reproduction. The picture from the Instax Y300 is completely neutral. The walls in our living room are white, so and they look white in, in this case. The picture from the Link White printer, the walls have definitely like a warm tint to them. So if that's something you don't like, you'll have to figure out how to get rid of that uh, when you take pictures with the iPhone and print it on the Instax uh, Link White. Maybe the Y300 is a little bit sharper. Again, it's not a huge difference. If you want to have them side by side, um, they both look just fine. So I generally wouldn't worry about the sharpness difference between the Instax Y300 and prints from the Instax Link Y taken with like a good quality smartphone. And for the last picture, I have a close-up portrait. So this is what's taken with the Instax Y300 and this was taken with the iPhone and printed on the Link printer. So here again, we have a huge difference. Uh, I also messed up on the print from the Instax Y300. I did use up the close-up lens, which you're supposed to use when your subject is between 40 centimeters and 50 centimeters. But I think in this case, my subject was further from my camera than the 50 centimeter mark. So it's clearly uh, blurry. And I kind of wanted to include this in this comparison because it shows you that it's really easy to mess up prints uh, when you're taking pictures with the Instax cameras, as opposed to with the iPhone, if you take a picture, it's blurry, you take another one. So you keep taking pictures and you don't waste uh, the Instax film you only print the pictures that look good. It shows you that if you're concerned about money and you don't want to waste prints, probably go the route of using a smartphone and then print them on the Instax printer. Another thing to know that even if I uh, did a good job on the Instax Y300 print and he was sharp, the background would still be uh, completely black. So a lot of these pictures when you have your uh, subjects in the foreground and uh, the background is not particularly well illuminated, a lot of these pictures will have kind of in the cave look. And that's something you can't really change with the Instax uh, Y300 unless you use like a, something like an external flash, which is definitely possible, but uh, it's a little bit more work. The picture from the iPhone printed on the Link White printer is a little bit flat for my taste. Uh, I probably uh, make it a little more punchy in the future. Again, it has a little bit of the warm tint, but it's a nice print that it reflects the reality. You can see his face nicely. That's how it looks like in real life. And you can also see the background of the living room. So in the print from the Instax Y300, it really shows you that the Instax Y300 is uh, lacking a slow shutter sync. So what that means is when you're taking pictures, particularly on parties, like in an indoor setting, which for me is a lot of uh, the situation where I take Instax prints, the flash flashes, illuminates the people in the foreground, but then the background is completely black. On the newer cameras, like the Instax Mini 11, it has a slow shutter sync. So what it does, it uses the flash to illuminate the people in the foreground, but then it keeps the shutter open for a longer period of time, so your background is not completely black. And that's really nice. So I wish they would make an updated camera of the Instax Y300 that would operate like the Instax Mini 11, but keep the controls of the light and the darken and maybe also give us the option to turn off the flash. That would be great. I hope this comparison was useful. Thank you for watching. See you next time.